to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today, Around Kansas introduces a Kansan who is a teacher, writer, filmmaker, screenwriter, and historian, Ken Spurgeon, the guiding vision for Lone Chimney Films. Then see why a trip to the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center in Oakley is a family favorite. Next, enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a story about kangaroo rats, unique residents of western Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the yellow brick road. It's Wednesday again. I'm Frank. I'm still Deb. <laughs> and this is Around Kansas. So good morning. Thanks for joining us. Last Wednesday in June. Yes. It looks like I got the memo. She got the memo. I got the memo. That's <laughs> it's right. It's blue day. It's sky blue or turquoise blue or teal blue or yeah, well, I guess it's not. It's close. So. It's close. It's well, close. and we need a little red and white too because can you believe it? The 4th of July weekend is coming up. No. Ooh. No, I can't. Yeah. The year is half gone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just can't believe it. Just can't believe it. Well, when you're having fun and traveling around Kansas, time just goes away. Time just flies when you're having fun. It does. <laughs> and I get to go, um, you know, everywhere I go, people are like, man, I love following you on Facebook. I love seeing all the cool stuff you get to do. I love doing all the cool stuff I get to do, too. <laughs> I really do. I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, you know, the meeting different people all over the state. And I'm constantly, this was so funny. I had a conversation with my friend Carol Ann the other day. And Carol Ann grew up in Chicago. So she is a city girl. You know, born and bred, through and through, she is a city girl. Now, I grew up in the country, so I'm a country girl. I don't care where you plant me, I'm still a country girl. So... Now that I'm that Oakley is my my new hometown, you know, and I'm t coming back and telling Carol, I might as well be talking to her about Mongolia because the <laughs> life is so foreign to her. And she and I'm talking about all these people doing creative things and cool things. And she's like, and you would just think that people just sit out there and just like sit on their tractor and do nothing. And I'm like, that divide between the city mouse and the country mouse is just huge. <laughs> and I don't know why city people see country people as as dull or as not creative when they're just the most creative people in the world. Because you got to be living on a farm. you got to be creative. Yeah. Well, years ago when I was in the sales staff at Wren Radio, we had a media buyer in Atlanta that really believed that Matt Dillon and all of them were out there in Dodge City, and we'd say, yeah, Matt Dillon was at the Capitol here last week, and we went by and said hi. And, you know, it's like it was real to them. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's just a, um, so I, but I love constantly meeting those creative people and seeing, you know, how people express their creativity. And, and again, yeah, you might be what some people consider out in the middle of nowhere, but you know, you've got all these wonderful resources and inspiration, and, and I love seeing what comes from that. You know, the art or the the crafts or, or just, uh, you know, the life that people make in the midst of that. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful. Yeah, but where you grew up, didn't you see Andy every day? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Talking to Andy Griffith, yep. of course. Sheriff. Yep. Every Sheriff Every day, Andy. every day. And Barney was everywhere, <laughs> let me tell you. And Goober and Gomer. I called home one day, and my sister's passing around the phone. Hey, hey, Debbie. Yeah, and Gurney says hey, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> really? We actually do really have some, Mayberry. some serious stories today, folks. Oh, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Darn, that always gets in the way of having fun, doesn't it? But we'll be back with some really great stories, serious or not, in just a minute. Stay with us. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. 
Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo. We're awesome. LeCompton, the name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. LeCompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. Experience the life of the mountain man, American Indian, trappers and traders at the annual Bald Eagle Rendezvous, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Spend the day in historic LeCompton shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Okay, we're back and we've straightened up somewhat. <laughs> Good. This is good as we get, people. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wednesday, you know. You That's got... right. <clears throat> Time so. to start the fun. Yeah. Plan for the weekend. July 4th is upon <laughs> us. Let's start the party. Yeah. So anyway, um, it, I know the next story coming up is about uh, home on the range. And, you know, that, that I don't want to give away the story, but there, it's really an interesting story about how it got written and the whole thing. But still nobody can figure out the antelope, because there weren't any. <laughs> and <laughs> also, the skies are not cloudy all day, so I'm not sure that he was even in Kansas when he wrote the thing. You know, he did take a drink every now and then, so I don't <laughs> know if that's the, the deal or what. Uh, though we did pass antelope the other day. Um, elk, antelope, all in one day. It was just like being on safari, I swear. Elk, antelope, <laughs> deer, skunk carrying its baby across the road. There were um, jackalopes and, uh, or uh, jackrabbits and maybe not jack, <laughs> maybe not really jackalopes. Jackalopes. All right, there were just jackrabbits. <laughs> and, um, She's from the east. <laughs> <laughs> there were jackrabbits and you just name it, every little creature you could think of was out there. So I don't know what Brewster Higley saw. But um, anyway, my good friend Ken Spurgeon and Lone Chimney Films um, is working on the documentary. I was with them a week or so ago up at Smith Center, and they're working on the documentary telling the story of Home on the Range and just how it, it was written and how it came to be internationally known. But Ken, you know, I wanted to pay tribute to Ken too and, and his buddies at Lone Chimney because Ken is just the master storyteller and he's such a good guy and um, cares so much about Kansas and the history of the West, and I'm just so proud to have anything to do with Ken. I've been involved in the last three films, the last three documentaries he made on on the border war in Kansas, and then so thrilled to be involved with this one on, you know, Home on the Range. So just, there's just no end to the good work he does. Hmm. We know some cool people, Frank. Yeah. Don't we, though? Yes. We do. We know some people doing wonderful things, and Ken Spurgeon's one of them. So if you haven't met Ken, I want to introduce you to him. He is a teacher, a writer, a philosopher, filmmaker, screenwriter, and an historian. Most of all, he is a storyteller who mines the fertile fields of history for his subjects. And Ken Spurgeon is the guiding vision for Lone Chimney Films. Lone Chimney Films was founded in 2003 by Ken and John Gehring. The company completed its first documentary, Touched by Fire, Bleeding Kansas, 1854 to 1861, in the spring of 2005. Its second documentary, Bloody Dawn, The Lawrence Massacre, was completed in late 2007, and both films have aired over 20 times on PBS regional stations across Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Iowa, and Nebraska. Both films have also been used in over 200 classrooms. Lone Chimney's most recent documentary, The Road to Valhalla, detailing the story of the Kansas-Missouri Border War, won the Best Documentary Award at the National Cowboy Museum, The Wrangler, in Oklahoma City. Ken and co-producers Sean Bell and Neil Bontrager are in the midst of another project, the story of the authorship, preservation, and legacy of the song Home on the Range, 
and the location where this unofficial anthem to the West was written in Smith County, Kansas. Prominent performers like Buck Taylor and Michael Martin Murphy have lent their names and talent to this project, and it promises to be a remarkable film. Whatever Ken tackles, whether he is coaching, teaching, directing, or filming, he is always at heart a Kansan. He is quiet, strong, visionary, persistent, honest, and artistic. Kansas could not ask for anyone better to tell our story. Here's another gardening tip with Annette Jackson from Jackson's Greenhouse. Fresh herbs are healthy and add zest to almost every recipe. The folks at Jackson's grow more than 50 varieties of herbs right here, and many are available year-round. Our staff has hands-on experience and can't wait to assist you with your herb needs. Stop in and see us at Jackson's. We're open seven days a week. Our annual June clearance is now bigger than ever. Choose Mix or Match Flat Specials or buy one, get one half off the second plant. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. And we're back again. So, um, you know, it is interesting. The next story is about Buffalo Bill, but uh, it's also interesting how he got the name. And uh, so that's in the story, so I really won't give it away. But it is interesting that uh, in the West, as it was being built, all of these characters got, you know, nicknames and, <laughs> and, and, and what have you. And so anyway, that's what the story right, can be spe about. Speaking but, of nicknames, uh -huh. um, of course, the guy that he met was Medicine Bill Comstock. Uh -huh. and medicine meaning superstitious, not like a doctor, but, mm -hmm. you know, medicine as in... Big medicine. Yeah, right. So it's more like superstition. My favorite nickname in the West, though, is Buffalo... Chips White. <laughs> and one time Phil Sheridan, I can't stand Phil Sheridan, but anyway, he was interviewing scouts and Buffalo Bill was out of town. He was back in Rochester or wherever doing a big show. So he was out of town and so Charlie White was like Bill's shadow and he dressed like Bill, he wore his hair like Bill, everything. So he goes in to see Phil Sheridan and Sheridan, in his usual um, diplomatic way, said, who the devil are you? And he said, when Buffalo Bill is not here, I am Buffalo Bill. And Sheridan takes one look and said, Buffalo Chips, more likely, except <laughs> he didn't say chips. And the, when the press reported it, they used the word chips, you know, to make it um, politically correct for, for uh, families to read. But that nickname stuck with him for the rest of his life, Buffalo <laughs> Chips. It's probably on his tombstone, I don't know. Yeah, well, what we need to do, too, of course, uh, Bill Cody, he's, his name was William Cody, but so many of these guys, for some reason, took on the name Bill. Like it was Wild something Bill. Bill, some Wild Bill. And yeah, of course whose he, name was James, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so anyway, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. Yes. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Billy. Let's see it. From 1867 to 1868, the Kansas Pacific Railroad was being built in the heart of Buffalo Country. From points west of Hayes, hostile Indians were a challenge to providing fresh meat to the railroad workers. The railroad employed experienced hunters to supply the meat. William F. Cody was one of those hunters. Riding his favorite buffalo horse, Brigham, and with the aid of his 1866 Springfield rifle, named Lucretia Borgia, a 50 70 caliber gun, Buffalo Bill fulfilled his contract with the railroad as far west as Sheridan. This was the inspiration for the Buffalo Bill bronze sculpture located just west of 2nd Street on U.S. Highway 83. Twice life-size bronze sculpture by Charlie and Pat Norton of Leote 
was voted one of the eight wonders of Kansas art. It commemorates the 1868 contest between Cody and William Medicine Bill Comstock, where the winner earned the name Buffalo Bill. At the Visitor Center, the Wild West Historical Foundation tells Cody's story and that of the legendary hunt. Read the storyboards, listen to the radio story recounting the historical contest, and take pictures in the Buffalo Bill, Annie Oakley, and Sitting Bull cutout figures. When visiting the sculpture, be sure to stop inside the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center. There are exhibits, an extensive gift shop, and facilities to host your own historic events. So whether you stop in Oakley for a day or for a lifetime, you'll be glad you did. Stop for the legend, stay for the day. I've roped and ranched all my life, and uh, a few years ago I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder in layman's terms. I decided that, you know, maybe I better listen to my friend John and and I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I talked to Patrick Farley and was amazed at the fact that after just four hours there that morning with amongst a bunch of wonderful people that life got better and it continued to get better and I'm completely healed. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. William F. Cody earned the nickname Buffalo Bill, and he had roots in Kansas. He lived in northeast Kansas as a boy. He was a Pony Express rider, went on to be an Indian scout, created a uh, Wild West show that toured the globe. And out west of Oakley, Kansas, there's a big, big statue which commemorates how Buffalo Bill got his name. This poem is entitled The Legend of Buffalo Bill. In the late 1860s, as the railroad built west, as part of our nation's destiny made manifest, all those railroad workers needed to eat, and the obvious solution was buffalo meat. William F. Cody hired on with the railroad then to hunt buffalo to provide meat for the men. His shooting demonstrated such excellent skill, his friends started calling him Buffalo Bill. But then they found another man using that name, and you can't have two men called the same, so they made a bet, as cowboys do, to see whose claim to the name was true. They had a hunt to see how many buffalo each could shoot. The one who got the most would win the dispute. They rode west of Oakley and started the hunt. The day ended with William F. Cody in front. The other fellow got 46, which was fine, but William F. Cody shot 69. He won that contest and much, much more and would be Buffalo Bill Cody forevermore. He formed a Wild West show and toured the globe with wild cowboys and Indians in buffalo robes. He had Annie Oakley, a sharpshooter like they'd never seen. They've performed for the president and even the queen. Now a monument stands on Oakley's west side showing Buffalo Bill on his famous hunting ride. For in the history of the West, he is riding there still, the legendary showman known as Buffalo Bill. Happy trails. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And again, here we are. So, do I not bring you the coolest stories, Frank? <laughs> yes, you I mean, do. well, this next one though is really. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it really is. Do they box? <laughs> you know, okay. The, you'll find out in the story, we're talking about kangaroo rats. And pretty much Kansas, you can divide it in half. They're mm -hmm. not in the east, and, but they're, the western half is almost a straight line up and down. And they are the wildest little creatures you've ever seen in your life. And so as I'm researching this, and I find out, um, you'll learn in the story, they have, their burrows have specialized room so there's one for sleeping one for storing food and there's a living room <laughs> what do these rats do in their living room do they have the other rats over do they have boxing matches that's do what they, i'm wondering you they're know, kangaroo rats so. is it like this open floor plan where it's you know living and dining and eating all in one room and so they they just bring everybody in and have a little feast and kick back and watch tv i mean why does a rat need a living room that is the funniest now, thing now how do they know it's a living room well i guess some scientist somewhere has observed them you know i just took that at face value but maybe we need to look into that a little more. A little couch and a little... Really? <laughs> little lights. Exactly. I know. And, and you know, they've got the, uh, you know, who knows what they're playing, Barry White playing on the stereo or something. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like, what? <laughs> do, do we have your interest up now about exactly. the story about kangaroo rats in Kansas? They are the coolest little creatures. I'm serious. They they do. They look like little bitty kangaroos. They just hop along in front of you. And, <laughs> so why don't they call them hop along rats and hop along Cassidy and and never mind. I will speak to them about that, Frank. Okay. Hop along, hop along rats. They just need the miniature horses, you know? They just had the little miniature horses and, yeah, the whole little world. Like the Hobbit world. There we go. Yeah. Like the kangaroo rats and the hobbits. Can we go away now and see the story? They are called kangaroo rats, well, because they look like little kangaroos hopping across the road in your headlights. Yes, they hop. They can, in fact, hop a distance of six feet, nine feet on a good day. This remarkable rodent can even change direction mid-hop. They are bipedal, meaning they use two feet instead of all four. They are four-toed little beasts with big hind legs, small front legs, and relatively large heads. The tails of kangaroo rats are longer than both their bodies and their heads. Another notable feature of kangaroo rats are their fur-lined cheek pouches, which are used for storing food. Their coloration varies from cinnamon buff to dark gray, depending on the species. The Ord kangaroo rat, found in the western half of Kansas, is cinnamon buff. They are rarely seen during the day, burrowing in sandy soil till nightfall, when they appear to be food for nearly every other creature on the plains. Coyotes, foxes, badgers, weasels, owls, and every slithering snake imaginable feast on the little fellers. Since they primarily feed on seeds, they gather as many as they can and stuff them into their little pouches. Thus, they spend their time outside the burrow gathering and hoarding and wait till they get back to the nest to begin digesting their haul. They do not need much water, instead breaking down seeds with their metabolism, making them ideal survivors in the arid landscapes of the high plains. They can also conserve water by lowering their metabolic rate which reduces loss of water through their skin and respiratory system. Another fascinating feature of these little guys is their complex burrow system. The burrows have separate chambers for specific purposes like sleeping, living, and food storage. The spacing of the burrows depends on the number of kangaroo rats and the abundance of food. Kangaroo rats also live in colonies that range from six to several hundred dens. The burrow of a kangaroo rat is important in providing protection from the harsh desert environment. To maintain a constant temperature and relative humidity in their burrows, kangaroo rats plug the entrances with soil during the day. When the outside temperature is too hot, a kangaroo rat stays in its cool, humid burrow and leaves it only at night. To reduce loss of moisture through respiration when sleeping, a kangaroo rat buries its nose in its fur to accumulate a small pocket of moist air. 
The next time you see the buff-colored little rodent crossing the road, you might take a moment to marvel at what an interesting little creature he is. You think they're enlightened enough now? <laughs> I, think, I think we're finally done, so I'm Frank. I'm Deb. Happy and, Fourth of July. Oh, yes, yes, and we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's